Welcome to the Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture Series. At the end of each slide, there will be a five second delay. Use this time to complete your notes. When you are done, push play and move on to the next slide. This presentation will begin in five seconds. Welcome to Virginia Civics and Economics Lecture 1.1, Introducing Civics and Economics. My name is Matthew Rossettini, and I am the luckiest civics teacher in the United States of America! You see, I teach civics and economics here in Virginia, the place where it all started. In 1606, a bunch of intrepid entrepreneurs founded the Virginia Company of London, and one year later they sailed here to Jamestown, Virginia, where they promptly failed at everything they tried to do. But while Jamestown is the first company in North America to be bailed out by the government, in this case the British, they also left us two important legacies. The first is representative democracy. It's here in Jamestown that we get our first representative government, and that forms the foundation for American civics. We also get modern economics. Our friends in Jamestown bring economics from England and establish American economics here in Virginia. So thank you, Virginia Company of London. You have made me the happiest teacher in North America. Go to the next slide. Well, that happened. But while I might be the luckiest civics teacher in America, you should be asking yourself one question at this point. Who cares? I mean, how does this impact you, civics and economics? Well, you see, we live in a unique society because unlike in a lot of places, how our society works depends entirely on how you understand civics and economics. So you need to understand how you fit into our society in order to be a productive citizen. Well, to do this, you're going to learn two things. The first thing you're going to learn are the basics of civics and economics. You're going to learn about the requirements and the responsibilities of citizenship, the role of the Constitution, your role in the economy, the political system. How do people actually get elected and how do you influence our government? Our government, federal, state, and local government, the impact of the rule of law, that's the courts, and becoming financially literate. But that's only part of understanding civics and economics. You also need to understand three important themes. You need to understand our political philosophy, what all of this is built upon. Thomas Jefferson, John Locke, James Madison, these are the folks who set the foundation for our government. You need to understand how we demonstrated our consent to be governed, and we find that in the Declaration of Independence, and you need to understand how we implement our consent through the Constitution. It's not enough to know the basics of civics and economics. In this class, you're going to understand how these three central themes impact all of these basic civic and economic concepts. And if you can do that, you will be a highly productive member of our society. Go to the next slide. So now you know how we'll go about learning civics and economics over the course of the year. But we still have to do something else. We have to define the terms civics and economics. Civics is the study of the rights and duties of citizens and of how government works. Civics is a discipline of social science, which generally focuses on the social life of human groups and individuals. So we're going to learn all those things we talked about when it comes to our government, but we're also going to learn about how being a good citizen is cool, because that's also an important part of living in the United States. The other major concept we'll learn is economics, which deals with the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services, or the material welfare of humankind. It's all about the global economy, baby. So here's the thing, like I said, you need to know those themes, but you also have to understand that in this country, you need to understand economics to be a good citizen. It's not enough to just understand civics. Go to the next slide.
Now that we've defined the term civics and economics, we need to understand the basic principles of each concept. So let's look at the basic principles of civics. The first principle is consent of the governed. The people are the source of any and all governmental power. You, me, your parents, and everyone else who lives in this country, we consent to be governed in a specific way. In other words, we the people have decided to live under a certain type of government. Well, what did we consent to? To answer that question, we need to talk to these guys. These guys are the founding fathers, and they decided that we would consent to live under something called limited government. Government is not all powerful, and may do only those things the people have given it the power to do. And we set forth our government's power in the United States Constitution. We the people consent to be governed under a concept called limited government. But there's a third principle in civics, and we really don't talk about that principle enough. That is the rule of law. The government and those who govern, as well as those who are governed, that would be you and me, the citizens, are bound by the law. And our rules of law are written down in documents like the United States Code and the Code of Virginia. We write down the laws so that everybody knows what the law is. And we all must follow the rule of law in order for our country to work. Go to the next slide. Well, this is great. We consented to be governed under limited government. The government's only going to do what we tell it to do, and everyone's hopefully going to follow the rule of law. And if there are those people who don't want to follow the rule of law, there's probably consequences. But we still have one important question to answer. Who is actually in control of our government? Well, to answer that question, we need to look at two additional concepts democracy and representative government. In a democratic system of government, the people rule. The citizens of that country rule, and the people control the actions of the government. But this occurs either through direct or indirect involvement with the government. You either live in a direct democracy or an indirect democracy. And to understand those ideas, we need to jump ahead in your education one year to World History 1 and talk about ancient Greece, specifically the city-state of Athens. You see, in ancient Athens, all citizens voted on the laws of the city. We call this direct democracy. If you were a citizen in Athens, you voted on the laws. There are over 370 million people living in the United States of America. Direct democracy is not going to work here. So, we use something called representative democracy. In the representative system of government, the people elect public office holders to make laws and conduct government on the people's behalf. This is different than in a direct democracy like Greece, in which all citizens vote or find consensus on policy issues. So unlike in Athens, when I vote, and eventually when you vote, you're going to vote for somebody like a United States Congress person. That person will go to the United States House of Representatives, and they will represent all of our interests when they make the laws. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.